Aloha, thank you for watching. I'm Sire Esther and I channel a soul group that I call the Wild Ones. They are the spirits of artists that want to share their experiences in the afterlife. Uh, it's been some time since my last video. Um, and the last time I channeled River Phoenix and I shared there that I got COVID and it, it wasn't very intense but it gave me very bad headaches for a couple of weeks actually I thought <laughs> they were going to last forever they were awful from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to bed I I was in pain but um, it got better with time, but I had no energy to do channelings in November. And this month, December, um, my kid had a minor surgery and it's been a bit busy here. Uh, so I was not in the right space to channel. But I didn't want to end the year without uh, making a video. In fact, I sat here a couple of times and I was about to press the record button and something would happen and I would just have to get up and do something else. Um, one of those times I was, I wanted to channel Michael Hutchins for his death anniversary last month um, so that time I got some cards I asked him for some cards to talk about uh, to talk about his life and the first one I got was um, two of cups beautiful card you can feel the loving energies from it. Um, so usually this card talks about relationships, romantic relationships most of the time, and uh, people um, tend to relate that with twin flames. But it also talks about a loving, kind, sweet person. And I would say uh, a person that is well balanced between his feminine and his masculine energies. So this card for me represents Michael. For other people who read it in other way, this is what represents for me. This is Michael. Don't you agree? <laughs> um, there is a flow of love and this is a person that likes to collaborate with others that enjoys um, being of service, um, is affectionate, um, and really looks for relationships. That's another thing that really, I think for me is very, it really says Michael is someone that looks for relationships, whether friendships or romantic relationships or um, nurturing bonds with a family. Um, it's someone that just do not like to be alone. It's not something that <clears throat> will enjoy. Um, he feels the most happy when he's in a relationship, a meaningful relationship. Um, That was the first card. Then he gave me justice. And this also talks about himself, someone that uh, looks for the truth, is honest, um, looks for fairness, also in the relationships and in his work. 
and looks for fairness in the world, <laughs> I would say. Someone that um, looks for that kind of balance, does not want uh, people to feel less um, or people taking advantage of others, um, lying or hiding things, betraying, that's not of his character. <clears throat> and then he gave me this five of wands it's it talks about it's somehow related with the previous cards uh, the cards of justice the card of um, unity partnership from the two of cups it's someone that looks for harmony to the point of avoiding conflict and and this this is something that was uh, pivotal on on michael's life um that he will bottle up resentment instead of uh, uh, going into conflict so the, his conflict would be internal most of the time. And sometimes it would be too much. And it would be very chaotic. <clears throat> when I asked him about death, it was very interesting. I got Ace of Wands. And it's interesting because it's the same card that River Phoenix gave me when I asked him about his death. So both of them, they see death, they see their death as rebirth, as um, even, a, even a joyful moment. Um, because he also gave me this card Ten of Wands, and it's also the same card that River gave me, um, talking about feeling burdened, uh, struggling with life because too much people depend on them. Um, this is this is this can be a beautiful card. It's a card of service, being in service of. Uh, to others, but it can also mean that you allow people to take advantage of you or abuse of you financially, emotionally. This is something that River experienced in his life, and I would say also Michael, because he was so caring of his relationship, it was, and he would avoid conflict. This this could happen, like to. He felt burdened and he felt like he was not in a fair, in a fair um, dynamic. Um, so for both of them, forever, for Michael, um, death meant finding the true voice and a new life, a new cycle and healing. Finding healing, that's very important. And when I ask him for a, for a message uh, for people, and it's also related with this one because, yes, you can feel bored in it, uh, you can struggle and lie, but it's a bit of hanging there. You will make it to the other side. Um, it won't be easy. It means hard work. It means planning. It means patience. Perseverance. Um, but at the end you will be able to see the bigger picture and understand your struggles, understand your shortcomings and your hardships. 
Yes, um, and you will blossom. And that's the message that Michael wants to convey today. That despite the difficult moment you may be going through, something will grow from it. Something beautiful, something meaningful. It's worth it. That was a bit long. And <laughs> um, uh, thank you, Michael, for these cards. And well, I actually don't know if he wants me to channel him now because it's been some time. I wanted to share these cards with all of you. And also, I want to thank each one of you watching. Thank you for. Um, thank you for following this channel, thank you for your subscriptions, your likes, for sharing these videos. As I had said, I don't promote this channel, and so I'm very grateful that for the people that actually share these videos in through Facebook or I don't know what else. <laughs> um, and thank you for your comments and your messages and I don't always reply but I do read all the messages I'm aware and sometimes if I don't reply to messages it doesn't mean that I don't care about what you're sharing it might be that I don't know what to say you <laughs> just just sad. I don't know what's going on. So sometimes people approach to me like I. I can enlighten them um, when it comes to a spirit communication or what's going on in their lives, and I'm barely. I barely know what's going on in mine or with my own spirit communication. It's okay not to know. Sometimes I'd rather not say anything instead of bluffing or say something that will could be detrimental for your own spiritual journey. I don't know. But I'm very thankful for everything you guys share through comments and messages. Um... I'm just waiting for so there is a moment in life when you have to make you have to take difficult decisions um and it might end up hurting others, upsetting them. But you have to draw a line. Um, stand up for what you believe. But also don't be deceived by your own beliefs. It's very easy to believe one thing or another. It's very easy to get proof and that what you believe is actually true. Um, every person has their own truth and they are not less or more than others, they are just their own. You can measure someone's life by your own truth, by your own beliefs. 
they can only prove their worth, the worth of their beliefs and values to themselves. Also to clarify, these are my dog's words. Um, so I'm maybe I will not trans channel him this time and I will just share his message I also feel river here maybe it's because I was mentioning him <laughs> um, is it being a bit louder okay a bit louder lately and I wasn't sure what what he wants to, to say or if he has anything to share he's saying that he would do anything to be alive and that doesn't mean this is river that doesn't mean that he doesn't enjoy the afterlife he does very much it's very freeing he knows that living in a human body would be very <laughs> oh no what he's speaking the word controversial about that yeah living in a human body right now would be controversial i think he's saying that he would be controversial if he would be alive he's saying I was not that controversial in my time because there was no not so much media cover and there was thankfully there was no social media the same as the same there was no social media it would have drawn me crazy even crazier than I was feeling at that time um, okay now I, I, I this is me <laughs> now I can understand that they don't want me to trans channel because both of them wants to talk and I think someone else um, but again with the river it doesn't mean um, that I don't crave for it and sometimes people that feel close to me that connect with me will feel that contradictory feelings that emotions the trouble emotions there is still trauma trapped within my identity And I'm not sure about the speed of my healing of my recovery. But being of service <clears throat> to humans, I think it helps me. I have said it before, but it's true. So thank you to each one of you that takes the time to connect with me to talk to me, to share with me your troubles and your moments of happiness. I know I can be intrusive. I know I can be intrusive many times and pushy and kind of a pain in the ass. I wouldn't say that. I don't think we can be a pain in the ass. But he disagrees. Um, he's saying that he grew up um, without much boundaries, emotional and energetic boundaries. So still now, sometimes um, his, um, his memories uh, of difficult moments in his life they kind of leak from his energetic body into others 
Um, but at the same time, I would like to say that it doesn't mean that those memories are only mine. And sometimes it ha this happens to people. They share their troubles with friends, with partners, and the other person feel burdened by them. And it's not something bad, something you should feel ashamed or you feel like you should stop doing it. Um, it's also a lesson for the other people um, to learn and build and nurture their own boundaries and their own limits. And also that these memories of pain are not from any individual specifically. They belong to the collective. So I, ex I had these experiences in my life, but they are echoes from other people's life, from my ancestors, from my families, from my relatives, from my friends, from the people I connect, the people I will connect in the future, and the people I will be in the future. So these memories, these, these feelings, do not always belong to someone. They kind of, it's a bit like we fish them, like they get in this hook, like we carry a hook, and and we they get stuck with us. Um, whenever we struggle with them. It's an opportunity to be with them. To cry about them or be happy about them because sometimes they are happy memories that feels like they come from nowhere. They come from somewhere. And sensitive people have uh, more hooks. <laughs> so, when we share our burdens, we are in this journey, in this healing journey together. Um, so someone else would like to talk a bit. Um, this feels a bit like a Christmas special. I wanted to channel... I want to channel him for his anniversary. It was also last month. But as I said, my head is didn't allow me to to do it um, I don't have much experiences about this spirit um, I don't remember watching his movies or TV series when I was young I probably did one of them at school, which was the most famous I don't have memories of it, but I felt touched by his death. And when I start channeling, he would pop up here and there. And I think last year I dreamed about him. I was I was with other people in a rural road and he appeared. People was, were scared because he was a ghost. And I would say, don't be afraid, he's a spirit that needs healing. He's Jonathan Brandis, actor. 
from the 90s and um, he committed suicide in 2005 I think or maybe 11 I'm really not sure um, and I really don't know what he wanted to share um, <clears throat> he knows for some people his death is the mother of um, a suspicious and people would say okay he he didn't suffer addiction he was not alcoholic um, I think some people have the, the idea that he was struggling with alcohol and drugs. He was not. At least he's saying I was not an addict in that way. Um, I was an addict to perfection. I was a perfectionist. I had no peace of mind. I was just very good masking, masking my anxiety, my shyness, my worries. Um, I would smile and people would be delighted. So I was good with that. I was good giving people what they wanted. I had no idea what I wanted. I wanted to be recognized. I wanted to be, I wanted to do some good work. And I felt I wasn't doing it. And I just couldn't keep the charade. And I would like people to understand that this can happen. That depression can be like that. that you can be smiling, you can party, you can wake up to work, you can take care of your friends and still be hell depressed inside. People think that depression has only one phase. People that cannot get out of bed, cannot take showers, have no energy for anything. I was aggressive for many years because I couldn't find meaning for my life. Couldn't get my purpose. Acting was all I knew from a very young age. Purpose is not something you do. Purpose is what you are. And how you share what you are to people. I wasn't sharing my true self. I was keeping it. I served very deep within myself. And I was addicted to my thoughts, saying that my life was meaningless, that I was going nowhere. That my work was shit. And the world would be a better place without me. And this is something that a lot of people think a lot. Some people think just in very low days, 
in very specific moments, others I do more frequently, and others for others is constant. And I I live in a time when <clears throat> talking about mental illness wasn't that welcome. And it's nice to it's nice to see that now it's a bit different. It seems different. It seems like a door has opened it. Um, but there is still a lot of shame and guilt attached to it. Um, Sometimes I, I, I feel I don't have much to offer. And when I look back, I was very honest in my work. Because I really love what I, what I did. I understand that. Now that there was something true that people could see and I was not able to see it at that moment. So I know now for sure that I do have something to share. I do have something to offer. And I want to connect with people. I feel ready to connect with people. So this Christmas, if you feel alone, we can chat, we can have some fun, I can be fun, um, I can cry with you too, I'm up for anything, anything that is true. Um, I'm Jonathan. You can call me John. And don't blame me for living this life early. I know now I did my best. Thank you, John. Okay, um, so I think that's it. Um, do you have anything else to say? Okay, Michael wants to stress about not avoiding conflict. <laughs> um, it doesn't mean that you have to argue with others or even replying to them when they make accusations, uh, when they blame you about something. But it means that you have to face why that's coming at you in those moments. You are always getting what you need.
even when it can be painful or it feels unfair. You are receiving what you are ready for. So if you want to experience something different, it is your moment, your time, your work to understand how, what can you do differently. So when there is conflict, face it. And ask to the higher part of you what action you need to take in the moment. And follow that inspiration. So what you get might be very different from one moment to another. And patience is not a very much valued trait in these times. But it's the one that people need the most. I need it the most. Patience with myself, with my growth my journey with my healing thank you so thank you for watching again I wish you beautiful holidays sorry for the sound but it's uh, summer here and there have been fires a lot of fires in the zone so transmutation <laughs> big transmutation so thank you and see you next year i wish you your relatives and ancestors peace Beyond all understanding. Aloha.